Welcome into the In the Money podcast for Keelan's Saturday card, October 7th, part of the big Fall Stars opening weekend for the Fall Meet. Tom Leach along with Jim Goodman, Keelan's director of mutuals and simulcasting. It's a tremendous card on Saturday. You've got an all-stakes pick five and the pick six that both start in the fifth race. You've got a pick four that starts in the sixth that's all-stakes. You've got a pick four that starts in the seventh. So just uh, some tremendous opportunities, some big fields. Uh, Jim, let's jump right into it with the sixth race as we'll uh, look at the all-stakes pick four to begin. It's the grade two TCA at six furlongs. Who did you land on? Well, in such a competitive day, and Ben Huffman, our racing secretary, did an absolutely wonderful job putting this card together today. We have, we've got 103 horses in 10 races, and that's including a six-horse field in the second. So these last few races, if you can find the winner, you can make some money. But this race in particular, the start of the of the All-Stakes Pick 4, I think Finley's Lucky Charm, the four, is a very strong uh, contender in here. She's just uh, been so consistent she's a neck and a half the length away from being undefeated for the last couple of years so she's just um with bj hernandez up and, and they fit like a glove uh, the one caveat excuse me i would have with her is she's six for six at churchill downs and but she's got two other wins elsewhere so i don't think she's just a churchill downs horse but if she's a churchill she's one to nine right here uh, ivy bell the eight also, it was really good at Churchill, but um, the top pick did beat her in their only uh, meeting, and I think she may be a step below Finley's Lucky Charm. And Bendable, the one, is the other one that I would consider because Richard Mandela doesn't ship for fun from California. And this filly ran at Del Mar last out after winning a grade three at Santa Anita in June. So uh, I brought her over here to take a shot at a $250,000 purse, so I'm going to use Bendable in there as well. But Finley's Lucky Charm, the four, is my pick in the TCA. I took the Mandela angle and went with Bendable here over Finley's Lucky Charm. It was kind of a <clears throat> toss-up for me. I got uh, swayed by the, the better price on Bendable. Um, came in and ran in this race last year and ran a good third, so has run over the track and has run well over it. Um, and it's Claiborne Farm and uh, Adele Dillschneider, too, so it's local connections that they're shipping in for. So uh, that uh, increases the, the thinking to me that uh, Mandela thinks he's really live here. Finley's Lucky Charm, yeah, obviously you have to use. Uh, Challen, I think, a uh, little light on speed figures, but really good speed. And uh, Peter Miller shipping across country uh, for this one, so I think that one's a little dangerous. And then I'm a Looker uh, has run well at Keeneland in the past at uh, in a big spot, so I think the Ra Lexus Raven run, I believe. So that one I'm going to uh, consider as well. But uh, Bendable's going to be the pick for me in the TCA. Seventh race, which will remind you, uh, we'll get to this uh, later, this also starts to pick four. The sixth starts an all-stakes pick four, but this starts a pick four as well. It's the grade one first lady. Uh, seven going here, but it's a really well-matched group. I went with Donna Bruja, three out of four at the one-mile distance, and uh, that's the thing about the first lady. It's a, it's a flat mile on the turf. Uh, she's won 10 of 13 overall, and she's working lights out. Uh, for Nacho Correa. So I'm going to go Donna Bruja here. She just missed in the Beverly D. Uh, Dickinson, Hawksmoor, and Roca Roja. Um, I'm going to use all all four of those in the pick four. I think it's a, a fairly evenly matched group among those four. But Donna Bruja is my win pick. How about you and the first lady? Yeah, I agree with you. I think uh, that race in the Beverly D, she was a winner and just, just got beat. Uh, she had the lead and, and, and fought back like a really tough mare. And you look at her and she... You know, she comes from Argentina, and you wonder about whether she's quality. She's she's top quality. It'd be a nice story to see Declan Cannon get his first grade one win. I think that's correct in my statement. Uh, I appreciate that uh, Korea has stuck with Declan Cannon here, where he could have got a better name uh, uh, jockey, and he's he's stuck with Declan, so that's a good thing. Um, Dickinson certainly won the Jenny Wiley here in the spring over Lady Eli. And Rocco Rojo, uh, Chad Brown, and Castellano exits the Boston Spa like Dickinson. And uh, like soft ground, if it were to happen to rain Saturday, hopefully it's not going to. It looks like it's going to hold off till Sunday. But if, if it's soft ground, Rocco Rojo moves her way up. But I'm going to use those three, but Donna Bruja is my pick there. Let's move on to the grade one, Claiborne Breeders Futurity. It is the eighth race and a well-matched big field here. Who did you go for? Yeah, this is another Breeders' Cup prep. We talked about it in the Friday card, and uh, the, the Breeders' Futurity the last few years has gotten some really good horses that went on and did well in the Breeders' Cup. 
And I think Free Drop Billy here is the pick. Um, I think his race at in the hopeful was a winning race. He just couldn't quite catch Sporting uh, Chance. And he stretches out from seven furlongs to a mile and a sixteenth here. Romans has this horse really working well. Had a 59 and two uh, five furlong work at Churchill Downs last out the best of 49. Uh, I think he looks better here than most horses. This is usually a crapshoot, but I I think it sets up well for Free Drop Billy. He's going to get the speed on the front end. I think Esmosh, the two that won really easily at Churchill, broke his maiden. Very impressive for Brad Cox, but he's not going to get that easy a lead with Lone Sailor, with uh, Bravazo, with Lone Rock, all these horses wanting the lead, ready prospector. So I think Free Drop Billy is just in a garden spot. Nine hole coming from out of it, stretching out to mile 16th. So I'm going to go with Free Drop Billy here. I'd use Esmosh in any multi-leg wagers. And also take a look at Give Me a Minute to Seven, still a maiden, but a neck away from a grade one win in the hopeful. So you got to give him a shot as well. But uh, my pick here is uh, Free Drop Billy for Dale Romans. I took 10 City. Uh, it was between him and Free Drop Billy. Uh, I like the two-turn race that 10 City has. Um, he won big here in April, so that's a plus. Uh, Kenny McPeak seems to have a really strong group of two-year-olds, and uh, when he stretches them out, they usually run better. And um, 10 City in his, in his second start around two turns, I think might improve here and could be very, very dangerous. Free drop Billy's got to be the one to beat. There's three others that uh, I would take a look at. Uh, I don't think I'll use these in, in a pick four, but uh, Enticed was an ultra-impressive winner. Won the first race of the day one day at Saratoga, and I happened to be watching, and this was a huge horse, uh, Kira McLaughlin, first-time starter, that just didn't look like it was going to be the kind of horse that would win first out at six furlongs and look be, would be more suited to, to two turns, and that's what he's getting here. Horrible post position, but just this, this horse I think has a lot of talent, so I'll, uh, I'll throw him out there. Bourbon Resolution I thought really ran an improved race last time for Ian Wilkes, and then Lone Sailor uh, also ran huge last time. Might have been a slop, but uh, uh, the, I was really impressed with his race. But uh, when I get to the pick four, I'm just going to use 10 City and free drop Billy in here. 10 City is going to be my key horse and use him in exactas with all those I've mentioned. Ninth race is the Shadwell Turf Mile. It's a big field, tough, tough handicapping challenge. Where did you land? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> my, my stance on Free Drop Billy is so strong that I am going to single Free Drop Billy, and then I, I, I'm going to go way deep here, may use all. I, I do have a pick, uh, and I've got two of my favorite horses are in this race actually i like i like three horses i like miss temple city a lot i mean how could you not love her with winning both the the uh, grade one mile races at keeneland last year and coming back to try to, to make it three out of the last four um she may not be quite as quick as she was last year her time figures are not as good even though she did one did win at kentucky downs i'm going to go with um Heart to Heart in here, uh, which is one of my uh, gutsy horse that I, I, I like front runners. I think he's um, got the best speed here. Uh, if you look at the other horses, there aren't a lot of horses that really want the lead unless Applicator goes with him, possibly, and Ballarock's the six. So I'm going to think Heart to Heart's going to get the lead under Giroux, and he's going to milk it a little bit and hold off down the stretch with Temple City flying at her and flying at him and DeVisadero really flying. I just can't bet DeVisadero in a mile race. I just don't think it's it's long enough for him. I know they want to take a shot at a million-dollar purse, but I, I I would bet him more at a mile and an eighth or a mile and a quarter, and DeVisadero just has to come from way out of it. And if we have a pace melt, meltdown, that could happen. But um, I think heart-to-heart heart is the speed of the race. I'm going to use him. But uh, in my pick four, uh, you can make a case for almost all these horses. There's really great. Mondi Elise is a is a great horse. It ran three links behind Royal Approval and would buy a mile. Um, so I'm going to go deep in the pick four. But my win pick, just for circumstances that we're talking about now, is heart to heart the ten. I ended up on a horse that when I just first saw the list of of names of horses that were entered. I wouldn't have thought I ended up here, but the more I handicapped the race, I ended up coming to the six Battle Rocks. Just missed here in the Makers 46. Uh, the last two races, it looks like this horse has gotten to his career best form, and he put two two races back-to-back. Really good record at a mile, which I like. And then Bill Mott, uh, always dangerous on these big days. 
So Bala Rocks looks like a four-year-old that is finally uh, maybe tapping into the uh, upside that they thought that he had. But I also want to use Heart to Heart, Miss Temple City. That that Those two were the first two I, I kind of thought I'd end up on. And then two Euro shippers, Mondi Elise, who's run here and run well before on Breeders' Cup Day back in 2015. Uh, the seven, and then the three from the same barn, and I have no idea how to pronounce this, Soudoua maybe, uh, the three horse, uh, getting Lasix first time, has uh, competed in a, like a group two and a group three in uh, his last two races, so I think that one is got to be considered as well. I'm like you, the, the deep as deep as you can go, as your budget allows, is probably the, the best opinion here, but I'm going to take Bala Rocks for the win pick, and then Maybe do a five-horse exacta box with all those I mentioned because I think you could get a, a good price on the exacta if you can just be right on the uh, first two. So let's go back and do uh, a pick four, our all-stakes pick four, Jim, and then we'll come back and handicap the the tenth briefly and uh, and add that as the late pick four. But uh, who's your all-stakes? What's your all-stakes pick four ticket look like? Okay, first leg of the TCA. I'm going to go three deep with the one bendable, the four Finley Sucky Charm, the eight Ivy Bell. So three race, three horses there. In the seventh, the first lady, I'm going to use uh, my top pick is Donna Bruja, the three, and then I'm also going to use Roca Rojo, the four, and Dickinson, the six. And I am going to single my horse um, in the um, in the Breeders' Futurity, and that will be the nine Free Drop Billy. And I'm going to take all in Shedwell Turf. So that is three by three by one horse, the nine by 14, and that's 63 bucks. I'm going to go three deep in the first, or in the TCA, the uh, Bendable, Finley's Lucky Charm, and I'm going to also include Challen. I'm going to use all four I mentioned in the First Lady. In the uh, Claiborne Breeders Futurity, give me Tent City and Free Drop Billy, and then I'm going to do five horses in the Shadwell, all the ones that I mentioned the five horses there, so three by four by two by five. Now there is a late pick four that starts in the seventh, and it finishes with a tenth race, a six furlong maiden race. Curlin's Honor looks awful strong in there. Bought at a two-year-old sale back in May for a one point five million. Working fast for Mark Cassie, and after a cold uh, Saratoga meet, I would expect the Cassie barn to be uh, firing for the Keeneland meet. Candy Zip and Puerto Rican style. Uh, also merit consideration. Puerto Rican style is a, a two-year-old sale purchase. I like to look in these two-year-old races, horses that were bought at two-year-old sales because they're usually looking for a, a quick return on the investment, and especially if they w- went for high prices. So the 5 and the 11 and the 9, uh, I want to use all three of those. And then if your budget allows it, I would also add grade 1. But if you want to keep the ticket down, you could exclude him. But uh, I thought he had a, a decent uh, first out for a good two-year-old trainer, DeVito, up at Churchill last time. So I'm going to use the four I mentioned, the first lady, the two in the British Futurity, the five from the Shadwell, and then I'm going to go four deep in the maiden race. How about you? Mine's real simple, Curlin's Humor. That's my single of the day. I think that uh, look at the works. If he takes that to the afternoon, he's going to win this for fun. So um, $1.5 uh, lot a lot of great works work coming into this race. Looks like he targeted this race, and uh, Cassie's going to have him ready. So I'm going to single Curlin's Humor in the end of my pick four. So if I do that, I can afford then. If I start off with the um, – with the seventh race, I use three, four, six, like I did in the other in the other one. That's Donna Bruja, the uh, Rocco Rojo, and Dickinson. So three, four, six. Then I could cover myself just in case I'm wrong um, in the Breeders' Futurity with with uh, Free Drop Billy. I could cover with a couple others in there. Um, just basically saying that, uh, well, maybe maybe I'm, my opinion is not so right. So I could go deeper there. I'm trying to find the ones I want to use here. I've got my Belmont. <laughs> picks out here but uh, 10 city i would probably use as as, as my backup there your horse uh, for kenny so i'll go too deep there and then i would uh, i would use all in the in the shedwell and single back to the nine so three four six with um 10 city is the six four. six nine oh, four, four nine. i'm sorry three four six with four nine with all with nine I want to remind folks, you mentioned the Belmont past performances you had in front of you. Uh, there are a couple of grade ones up at Belmont as part of their Breeders' Cup preview day that are going to be wrapped into a pick four that includes two races here at Keeneland, right? They are. It's going to start uh, with the eighth race at Belmont, which is the grade one champagne for two-year-olds. And one of the horses you mentioned uh, in our race is also cross-entered in the champagne, enticed. And I'm not 
I think he's going to stay there, um, but I'm, I'm not 100% certain as we record this, but Enticed is in that race. And then their other race there is, is the 10th Jockey Club Gold Cup with Keen Ice. So you're going to link the Champagne and then the Breeders' Futurity at Keeneland and then the Jockey Club Gold Cup and the Shadwell Turf is the final leg. And two of those will be going to, going to be shown on NBC from 5 to 6. So we got coverage of the Jockey Club Gold Cup and the Breeders' Futurity and the Shadwell Turf on NBC on uh, Saturday afternoon. Just a great Saturday of racing. Should be a good weather. Uh, leads into the football game at night, the uh, bluegrass doubleheader. So it's just one of those classic uh, Kentucky Keeneland weekends coming up. Enjoy it. Best of luck with your Saturday wagers. We'll be back with the Sunday edition of our In the Muddy podcast when we will look at, among others, the grade one Judmont Spinster on the Sunday card. We're Jim Goodman. I'm Tom Leach, and this is the In the Money podcast for KeenelandSelect.com.